Hey there! Do you feel motivated and ready to create art to finally spend some quality me time to relax before, in between or after a long day of work but you simply don't know what to paint? Because in this video I'll show you a few simple watercolor painting ideas you can try out that will take you only a few minutes. You can even paint them side by side and stop whenever you have to move to something else and then just come back later. These fall inspired watercolor paintings are super fun and so relaxing to paint and I really hope you enjoy them as well. Let's get started. Let's start with the first painting. Here I'm using 100% cotton cold pressed watercolor paper that I already divided into three sections using washi tape. And then you want to start out by distributing clean water all over the first section. Here I'm using a flat synthetic brush and I just simply distribute clean water as evenly as possible. You don't want any pools of water gathering around the edges. While the paper starts absorbing some of the moisture, let's prepare some paint. In my reference picture that you can see here, you can see that there is very foggy weather and I can see some browns and grays. So in this case, I'm going to use my black and sepia colored watercolor paint and dilute it with water so it's not too dark. I started with small pools of water and then I simply added just a little bit of pigment into each pool. Once you've prepared the paint, use a round brush and start distributing both colors to different areas on your paper. You want some areas to be brown, some grayish. Once you've covered everything in paint, add a little bit more brown pigment to the pool to create a more concentrated consistency of paint. Then start painting thin and thick lines on top of the wet layer of paint to create tree trunks and branches. Because here we're using the wet and wet technique, the lines will look really blurry making it look like these trees are very far away and covered in fog. Once you've added these blurry lines, you can either wait for everything to dry naturally or use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Once everything is dry, the painting looks like this. Now it's time to add more layers on top. This time you're going to paint trees that are closer to the viewer and covered in less fog. For this step, we're going to use the layering technique. If you run out of paint, create a new pool of water and then just add brown color paint to dilute it again. You want to create a light value of a brown color because we will layer the paint on top of another layer of color so it will be automatically look slightly darker. From there, load up your brush with paint and start painting an additional row of tree branches and trunks. As you can see, I only use one round brush and change up the pressure to create either thick or thin lines. And don't worry about making the lines perfectly straight. You want to make the lines rather wavy and uneven so it looks more realistic. Once you're done with that, let everything completely dry again. Now we want to add another row of trees that is even more visible to the viewer. Again, you want to use an even darker value of the same color. So here I'm using the same sepia color and just adjust it with a little bit of water and some of my reddish brown because I just wanted the color to be slightly warmer and more reddish. In this case, I used my English red color. Once I was happy with the color, I then went in and started adding another row of trees. One tree on the right and one on the left. For the left tree, I added a little bit more pigment so it looks darker and even more visible to the viewer. I also made it look like it's cut off by the frame so we only see half of it. 
From there, I continued painting more branches and additional details. Here you can also play around with the wet and wet technique and add some shadows as well. In this case, I simply used more pigments to make the color darker and added it to a few areas focusing on the left side of the tree. And now using the tip of my brush, I went ahead and painted a few thin branches following my reference as a guide. Again, don't try to make the branches perfectly straight or something like that. Make them wavy and just have fun with it. I even left out some space in between some brush strokes just to loosen up the style. And this is how it looks for now. Once everything is dry, it's time to add the fall leaves. For this step, I'm using my Indian and lemon yellow and mix them together. Then you want to start dabbing on the paint to create small blotches of paint to mimic leaves. Here I also used the water wet technique again to make loose transitions between a few colors. So instead of keeping something just orange, I added just a little drop of my brown red color to darken a few areas. I think this way the leaves look a lot more interesting. Repeat this step until you're happy with the amount of leaves and then we can add some more details to the tree. For this step, I used my black colored paint and just lightly brushed over the pigments over the dry layer of paint. I basically used the dry brush technique to add some texture to the tree without overthinking the step. And this is how it looks so far. While the first painting is drying, let's move on to the second painting. Again, begin by distributing clean water all over the page. Make sure you remove any excess pools of water so you can keep everything under control later. Next, we want to use the wet and wet technique again and start with the first layer. For this step, dilute brown and gray colored paint with water to create a very light value and then you want to start distributing it to the top part of the paper to create the gloomy sky. Next, add the same light brown color and add it to the upper third of the page to create a loose silhouette of trees. As you're painting wet and wet, the edges are very fuzzy and it looks like the trees are covered in fog as well. Because I felt like the sky looked a little bit too brownish, I simply added a little bit of gray on top and blended everything together. Next, load up your brush with a reddish brown, here I'm using English red, and a little bit of sepia to make it darker, and then you want to start dabbing on the paint right below the first silhouette you just added. From there, play around with different fall colors. Here, for example, I dabbed on some oranges, browns, and used the pointy shape of my brush to create loose silhouettes of trees. When these trees dry, they will look like they're hidden by the fog far away from the viewer. Mm -hmm. 
one to the foreground. Again, I'm using a reference as loose guidance, so I decided to use my leftover yellows, oranges, browns, and a little bit of green to apply those to the foreground. Don't be afraid to make your colors look muddy. Fall colors are usually full of beautiful muted reds, greens, and yellows. As you can see here, I used different colors and added them wet into wet to create a loose field with lots of different fall colors. I also added just a few reddish brown dots here and there just to make them look like loose flowers on the field. And this is how everything looks once everything is dry. Now we can go ahead and add the second layer of paint. This time we're using the wet on dry technique. Following my reference as loose guidance again, I went ahead and outlined a few colorful trees right below the blurry row of trees. Here I'm using the tip of my brush to dab on yellows, reds and some browns to create simple silhouettes of trees. Make some trees smaller, some taller so it looks more interesting. And to make them more three-dimensional, I added a few drops of my dark brown color to the lower part of the trees and then just let it melt into the wet paint below. Now we can move on to the foreground. As you can see, the foreground looks a lot paler when dry, so here I simply went over with the same colors and applied another layer of paint just to make the colors look less pale. I also kept the area around the trees brighter and made the foreground rather dark so the viewer is invited to look at the trees and isn't distracted too much with the field in front of him. And to add a few details, I used the lifting technique and shaped a few light reflections on top of the field. So instead of painting the grass one brush stroke at a time, I actually lifted off the wet paint to reveal the lighter color below. Now let everything complete dry and we can move on to some final details. This is how it looks once everything is dry. Now you can keep it the way it is because I actually really like the way it looks, but I spontaneously decided to paint the tree that is on the reference picture as well, but you don't really have to do that. I think your job as an artist is to really pick the things you want to paint and leave out unnecessary elements. So for this step, I used different greens and browns to shape the tree by dabbing on the paint and then I used some of the same paint to add details in the field. So now instead of lifting off the paint as I did in the previous step, I painted some of the lines instead. And this is how it looks. While this painting is drying, let's move on to the third painting idea. Again, start by evenly distributing clean water all over the paper and remove any excess pool of water if you see anything. For this painting, we're going to use the wet and white technique again. Once you've applied the water to your paper, load up your brush with blue colored paint. Here I'm using a mix of my two different blues and distribute them starting at the top and bottom. You basically want to loosely blend out the paint and leave out some white areas in between to make them look like clouds. While you do that, leave the center of the paper free from any paint. Mm -hmm. 
Now load up your brush with a muted green colored paint. So here I'm using my green that was already in my mixing palette and I added just a little bit of my sepia color to make it less vibrant. From there, start applying the wet paint onto the wet paper. I'm following a reference picture again and make sure I apply the paint to create the trees and the reflection in the water at the same time. Here I switch between yellows, reds and greens while adding paint to the top to create the actual trees and the reflection. Once I applied the first wash of paint, I divided the colors by adding a horizontal dark line where the shadows will be. Now to make the water look like actual water, let's add some light reflections. For this step, use either a clean flat brush or a round brush with a pointy tip and then carefully lift up some of the wet paint by creating these horizontal lines. You don't need to add a ton of those lines, just right around the areas where the trees are reflected onto the water. You can also use the same trick to add a few additional light reflections inside the trees. And this is how it looks. Now let everything dry and you can add some final details. Once the paint is dry, you can add another layer of paint. This time wet and dry, similar to the previous painting. For this step, I'm using pretty much the same colors and I apply them slightly lower than the previous row of trees so you can see the contrast between trees that are far away and the trees that are closer to the viewer. I also added just a little bit more highlights and shadows and the painting was finished. Now you just need to remove the tape and you're done. If you want to start painting with watercolors and need some guidance on what you need or what you look out for, check out my free guide to watercolor painting. You can find a link in the description box down below. Now if you're thinking right now, okay Mako, I now I have ideas on what to paint with watercolors but it's so hard for me to find time to actually sit down and paint, even if I feel motivated to paint. So if you see yourself as a well-watched but a highly practiced watercolor beginner, just because you simply can't find the time to paint, the next video will be perfect for you. Because in the next video, I'll share some simple tips and tricks on how you can go from trying to find the time to actually making the time to paint. In the meantime, you can check out the videos right here that I think will be super helpful to you as well. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!